Here we go. So, we recently confessed our feelings to Chevalier after a really cringe secondhand embarrassment scene. So, I hope I don't experience any more of that pain now that they've confessed their feelings for each other. So, it looks like we're probably gonna get into the, the witches invading the castle uh, segment that seems to happen near the end of every route now. You confessed after a twice scene. <laughs> Your secondhand embarrassment, what? Princess, um, are you okay? Oh, if it isn't the princess, are those dark circles under your eyes from a romantic night out? Mm -hmm. No, I stayed up all night playing a uh, Skyrim. No, of course not. I'm really cringe secondhand embarrassment. Ah, I see. Understandable. Because I was going to say I'm secondhand embarrassment. Uh, speaking of, uh, um, well, not really what we were talking about, but me saying that I stayed up all night playing Skyrim. Um, <laughs> jokes on you, Twy. Ellie always confessed to me first. <laughs> so last night, um, after the Had in Time stream, well, like, it was, there were like a few hours after that. Um, since I think, oh, is it Song was streaming? Uh, after I finished? Um, but yeah, for a while, uh, we got in a call and we watched a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexo last night. Uh, and stayed up until 2 in the morning watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. And I forget which episode uh, we're on, but we got to where, um, what was it? What was his name? Trey Bolton! Trey Bolton! Um, we got to where Trey Bolton was introduced, and I really like, um, his design. <laughs> And also, I saw Anna Kaboom, and uh, that was a hard episode to watch. But I like Trey Bolton. Trey Bolton and Kite are my current favorite Zexel characters. For any of those, can what is it? Curious about my Yu-Gi-Oh Zexel adventures? That's where I'm at now. I'm sure Elliot would confess that he murdered someone to everyone at the same time. Why would I confess to that? I'm not dumb. If I like murdered someone and I was like going to confess, I would do it through like um like a video game or something. Like you guys ever see those video games where you send letters? I would do that, but like anonymously. Alright, I was gonna say, hit me up next time you do Hattie Time. The co-op in levels just makes me a ghost, so I can't interact with you outside of the ship. Oh, but I can be your Yoda. Oh, thank you. You'll, you'll help me with that that one that I, I missed that one picture of, right? You, you can join for that? Elio, Elio, do you know Quattro yet? Yes. Yes, that's the that's the dude with like the, the pink and blonde hair with the little scar on his eye, right? The... I believe Yume and Topa headcanon Quattro as being Mexican. Kite is good to be honest. Also, of course, you like the problematic space boy. Wait, Trey is a space boy? He's a problematic space boy? I don't know. I've actually never done it. Oh, huh. Well, we should do a test later today then. You would do that, huh? Hey, Elio, want to come to my Animal Crossing island? <laughs> Why? What's on your Animal Crossing Island? You want me to confess on your Animal Crossing Island? I like a layout, like a, a custom design on your island confessing. Trey isn't really problematic, is he? Uh, I'm, I didn't really see anything too problematic from the one episode I saw of him. Oh, Kite is the problematic space boy. I mean, I love every character named Kite. Like... My favorite dot hack character is Kite. Like, if I ever get around to playing dot hack, you guys thought I was a simp. I've loved Kite since I was nine years old. I had a poster of him on my roof, on, on like my ceiling 
so that when I would go to sleep, he would be the first thing I would see when I go to sleep and the first thing I'd see when I wake up. That's the levels of sympathy I have towards Kite from Dot Hack. So whenever I see a character named like Kite or Kaito, I tend to like them. <laughs> Quattro, I use his cards IRL. I'm free today and can do that, yes. Okay, nice. Thoughts on Quattro? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. At least he wasn't the luck boy. It was funny though. <laughs> Cause we were watching the one episode with the the douchebag luck boy fighting uh Yuma and everything. And me and Topa just spent the entire episode talking about Komaida. <laughs> Yes, please confess on my Animal Crossing island, but you can like someone problematic because they are fictional. Unless their problems are like the bad problems, <laughs> yeah. You guys thought I was a simp, yes? Kaito Momota, Luminary of the Stars? I do like Kaito Momota, Luminary of the Stars. And like Kaito, the Vocaloid was my favorite Vocaloid growing up. Heiji Towa is the bad problems. You cannot like this problematic. Yeah, we were actually talking about Heiji Towa last night because we started talking about Danganronpa, me and Topa. And we were just going off about Heiji. And like, I, I mentioned Kori Kiyo at one moment too. And I was like, yeah, I thought, it, like, they were saying that they thought they would like Heiji Towa by his design, but then they saw his actual character. And I was like, yeah, I thought the same thing about Kori Kiyo. Elio, have I got the sport for you? It's called kite flying. I actually, when I was a kid, I would fly kites out and I would be like, <laughs> kite. <laughs> oh God, that episode is worse in Japanese. Really? Quattro is cruel to be honest, hence why I have his cards. Huh, huh. I have to see more of him then. I don't, I haven't really developed an opinion on him yet. Anyway. You were out with someone last night? Yeah, we were playing Skyrim. No, they're from being woken up early by Delora. Wait, what? They are from being woken up early by Delora to do chores. What is this English? Delora grins at me from the other side of the bar, but says nothing as she goes back to a conversation with another boarder. They skip two scenes where Nagito kissed Yuma's sister. Uh, ugh. Yeah, oh lord. Yeah, I did not like... I did not like the lucky boy. I hate that you called him Nagito, though. Don't do that! <laughs> He's not... Like, the reason we started talking about Kobaida was because, like, we were fi like we were watching the, the duel between him and Yuma. And, like, uh, the lucky boy was like, I have all the luck. And then, like, I saw, like, Yuma like getting a card from his deck and I was like, oh uh, yeah, well I have Nagito Komaida on my side. <laughs> Can't hear about it right, right now, but hi, hope you're all doing good. Bye, Jackie. Yeah, so like me being like, I got Komaida Nagito on my side. And like, we started talking about like how everyone is all like, oh, Komaida sucks, Komaida's problematic, but he's got like a really good character backstory that no one knows. So like me and Topo were screaming about Komaida and how he's a better character than this dude in the anime. <laughs> we just talked for like two episodes. Like we were watching, like I, we had subtitles. So I was reading the subtitles while I was talking. <laughs> And we were talking for like two whole like episodes about Danganronpa. <laughs> I felt bad for you, babe. It's really not hard to be better than Charlie though. Charlie is a one-off character. I thought he was gonna be like a reoccurring character since he had like a, a past with Yuma's sister. Nagito is an interesting antagonist. <laughs> yes, Nagito is very interesting. I feel sad whenever people like just think that he's a psycho because they haven't seen his free time events, which really puts into perspective why he's that the way he is, you know? Nagito is a bastard, <laughs> says Barnhouse, the resident Nagito Kinney that didn't know Nagito's backstory. It's like saying Byakuya is more interesting than Leon. I mean, true, Byakuya is more interesting than Leon. <laughs> Even without the free time events, being a psycho does not make you boring. 
He's friend-shaped, but lined with spikes. Opinions on Bronk. Which one was... Is Bronk like Yuma's friend? I assume that's Yuma's friend. Darling, you are no fun. You are no fun at all. You must tell me what happened last night. Last night? Yeah, okay, so it is Yuma's friend. I like him. The thing the thing is though with the Zexal watch along with Yume is that Yume skips a lot of episodes that are filler and we just watch like um like episodes that matter. So I haven't seen too much of Bronk. But I do like the scenes I've seen of him, like when he had Yuma's, um, like, uh, artifact with him because, uh, when Yuma got taken over, uh, by the Shadow Astral and all that, I, I thought the duel with Bronk and that was pretty cool. The title is Escaping Secondhand Embarrassment. Why are we talking about Charlie? You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Elio, even if Yume hadn't skipped episodes, Bronk still doesn't do shit! <laughs> oh my god! Do you like the bouquet? Oh, so you helped him get the bouquet, huh? How do you know about the bouquet? So yeah, that was what they were talking about. To talk about, like, him confessing to Lucette. Okay, I like this. I like that they, like kind of got along for a little bit since they were they were fighting a while back so I, I guess they bonded why because it was my suggestion and when chevalier was asking karma for advice it was about me hey bronk is cool his boss monster is cool <laughs> I, I think i remember liking yeah he had like the he had those uh clock uh stuff I, re I really liked the deck that he used in that one battle. It seemed really cool. Have you seen Quattro's monsters yet, Elio? Yes, I did. I did. I, I got up to the one duel with, uh, with Trey. <laughs> Look at the way she smiled, Anis. Last night must have gone well. I'm confused. What happened last night? I'm going to get Rumble to give me all of the juicy details when he comes downstairs. Bronx wind-up monsters? Yeah! He had, like, the wind-up monsters, and I think he had, like, a, a clock or something that, like, gets stronger each turn or something. I liked that. I also liked, uh, Miss Kaboom's, um, deck, but I don't like Miss Kaboom. I said it before and I say it again, hard read. Elio is gonna like Quattro by the end of Zexel. Really? Cause I feel like I, I like Trey more. Quattro's monsters are so good, I love using them. What game is this? This is Cinderella Phenomenon. It is an Otome game uh, where you date boys that are cursed with uh, fairy tale curses. That is Chevalier to you. Miss Kaboom's trains, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're allowed to like multiple characters? Well, I like Kite and I like Trey. <laughs> Chevalier appears behind Karma, smiling. He seems a lot calmer today than usual. I also liked another character, but apparently he was a one-off character and never appears ever again in the series, which made me really upset. He was like the... I forgot what episode it was, but he was like, um, he was like an actor in like a, in a show. Eddie K this game. Yeah, no problem. He appears again. He does? You just summoned your mom? Yeah! <laughs> it can only be a character ever. You're the character ever. He glances over karma at me and we watch each other in a silent gaze. Seeing his eyes reminds me of last night, which makes me inadvertently flush. Chevalier just lurks, just winks at me. Chevalier, what is that? Something you say when a person sneezes? <laughs> Chevalier. No, that's his name, Rumple. That is Chevalier. Broke his curse yesterday. I said that really weirdly. 
There is stunned silence from everyone in the immediate area. Even Delora walks over to us. Please walk over me. Please, Delora. He appears three to four times if I remember well. What? He's not, he's not gonna be in like a filler episode, right? Cause I need to see him. You may better not skip the episode with him in it. What's this about a broken curse? Was it you, Rumble? Elio is the ever, never is the 11. <laughs> never 11. Also Nirvana is the initiative. <laughs> Horny plus 10 bonks. Oi! Don't, don't, y'all, y'all bonking me, specifically Twy and Barn bonking me, when I know y'all simping for Delora too. He's going by something that sounds like a fancy cake. Hi, hey, hello, hello, Bionic, welcome! Hello, hello! Her face seems to be bursting with excitement. Although she is her usual calm self on the outside, I can tell by the bounce in her step and by the way she raises her voice to make an announcement that she's proud. Well, she should be proud! When everyone has learned that Chevalier has broken his curse, people come to the table offering drinks and congratulations. Never said I didn't agree with you about the Dolores Steffi's bun. <laughs> Chevalier gets lost in a crowd, mostly of women, but... What, what was that? But much to my surprise, Chevalier does not flirt back with any of them. And then, in between our celebrations for Chevalier, the front door to the marchant opens and Waltz rushes inside. Also, he's not he's not flirting with girls anymore because he confessed to me, so... I like that. That That's always one of the concerns I have with like these kind of playboy type characters is like... I mean, it's fine, you're, you know, you're playing the field, like, you're not, you're not dating anyone yet. I mean, kind of don't like that character archetype in the first place, but, like, every time I play, like, one of these characters, I always get nervous that when it actually gets to, like, the, you know, dating him, he's still gonna, like, hit on other people, and I'm just like, no, that, I don't want to see that. Maybe I'm a possessive type of person. But I've never liked that. Like, I would never want to date someone that would hit on someone else in front of me. Unless, like, I knew the person well and knew that it was a joke, you know? But, like, the way Chevalier flirts sometimes can, uh... <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know? And then in... Oh, yeah, I already read that. Where are Delore and Lady Parfait? I need to speak to them immediately. I heard Lost Ref. I heard the Nirvana Initiative. <laughs> I take it you now have the game. All is well with the world now. I do, and I even get to play it today. Am of excite- Oh, nice! I, I heard, like, you had, like, a pre-order problem. So I'm glad you got it, Barn. Waltz, you're just in time. We're all- Something has happened at the palace. Of course, because we're nearing the end of the game. For- for Chevalier's route. So of course something's happening at the palace. When doesn't it? Maybe I'm a possessive type of person. Yandere Elio? What a shock. <laughs> Elio is possessive, meaning he hops onto people's backs and consumes their souls to make them play dot hack and eat hot chip. I do. <laughs> The room goes quiet at Waltz's proclamation. A few people shift uneasily in their chairs. Some try to go back to conversation. Most people do not care what happened in the palace, but they can tell by the tone of Waltz's voice that it's bad. I was watching esports and literally every team I wanted to win lost. Ah, that sucks. I hate when that happens. Well, hopefully another team you like wins. What happened at the palace? An uprising. Of course it did. And I'm guessing that bastard of a knight with the big nose did it. Uh, what? The actual secret Elio Lord? <laughs> oh god, I can't wait for some day when I can do a, a lore video for you guys because I actually have like a design for another character. All, all like drawn up and stuff 
to use for the video. Like, I don't want to, like, reveal her character straight away, but I want to have a silhouette of her in the lore video, so... <laughs> I want Elliot to hop onto my back, then we can zoom around making plain noises. <laughs> it will be la la revolution. That, cancel that castle is French. Nah, the dude with the big nose is more French, because he's evil. Remind me to say, oh lord, lore. Hey, Elio. Minions. I see you read my tweets, Bar. Did you read my tweets about my minions experience, Bar? <laughs> if I can help with the lore vid in any way, let me know, Elabon. Thank you. Minions. Thank you, Twy. Fix that for you. Thank you. Please. A coop staged by witches. Witches have taken over the palace. The information is so sudden it makes me dizzy. I reach out to grab the table and my hand lands on the wood before I can slip. Is uh the snake witch there? He's not he's not dead in this universe, right? He's not dead in this route, right? Right? <laughs> I read the tweets while eating popcorn and sipping wine like the finest of literature, laughing heartily at the news of the bun's journey through fire. Oh, well, well, thanks for being entertained at my suffering, born. <laughs> Witches have taken over the palace? An army of them? I'll make fun of Elio for a lot of things, but not minions. I did see the minion maid right before I started streaming. I saw you quoted me saying, I don't want minions, I want maids. With a minion maid. That's the only good thing that the minions has ever done is that one scene with the minion maid. That is it. Everything else, out of the window window the only minion that will survive the minion massacre is the maid minion <laughs> no only a few durian strides across the room followed quickly by garland i will make fun of elio for a lot of things but not minions thank you i'm glad someone gets it Someone is finally defending me. What's this about witches taking over? We have some of the best knights at the palace. <laughs> Jumbo, Jumboyums, Jumbons, hmm, Wumbo? Elio, you predictable simp? Oi! There's no way witches could break in under the palace's guard. It's my pleasure, bun! Oi! So, Barn is a wine ant. Barn, can you be my wine ant? Of course, darling! <laughs> I can just hear you saying that in your voice, like, Of course, darling! <laughs> oh my god. Unless they had someone inside helping them. Yeah, the fucking big nose night guy. Mr. Wario himself. Alcaster? No. Myth. Myth and Roid? I gotta disagree there. What about the minion Tic Tacs? They were the bomb. I I did not have the minion Tic Tacs, but I did have what was that one? Um what was his name? Drew? Was that his name? The like the tree boy from um The ga Galactic Guide uh Forget the full name of it, but y do you guys know who I'm talking about? I had a tic-tac thing of him. Who are we talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about the tree guy! Alright, I love how you're just accepting that I make fun of you for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared for it at this point. You know him as Mithros. He uses a different name now. I, every time I read his name, I keep wanting to say Mythos. <laughs> Sir Mythros, the king's advisor? Imagine... Oh, I can't read that, I got cut off. 
Actually, I have minion candy in the other room. It seems appropriate to eat it. The minion Tic Tacs are banana flavor. Of course they are. <sighs> He's a witch? There's no way Mithros is a witch. We would have known. Barn is my wine aunt. I need to do out of that. <laughs> glamour. He used a glamour. I didn't know this was Final Fantasy 15. At the same time, I am also the alcoholic uncle drinking away a shady past he doesn't talk about until a figure from the past, thought to be dead, shows up at Callahan Cruz's 16th birthday unexpectedly and say we've got a lot to talk about. And a whirlwind adventure around the world begins as we fight off the secret organization trying to subjugate the world. <laughs> I feel like you took a movie plot, but I forget what movie. Everything Walt says suddenly gets swallowed up in questions. Jurian and Garlan ask questions after question, while others start surrounding Walt to ask him what was happening to the king and his children. I try to step closer to listen, but I cannot hear over the frantic voices in the room. Yeah, I wonder how, uh... Our, our step-siblings are doing. Did they get kidnapped yet? Sir Mithros. I never trusted him. I never thought he would be a witch. Well, he put a spell on me, that's for sure. <laughs> Glamour? I hardly know her. <laughs> the room only quiets down when Dolores and Parfait come to punctuate the conversation with their own demands for everyone to give Walt space. I'm gonna get my minion candy. Why? The Marchand boarders are all taken into the reception room, where Walt stands at attention, waiting to answer questions. I think you took a movie plot, my man, that is very close to being the plot of the third part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Ah, so you took it from JoJo, I see. Where's the Stone Ocean part? He explains that he was looking into a rumor about Sir Mithros from only a few days ago, and he found out about the witch's uprising. It was a surprise attack orchestrated by Mithros, who let the witches in through a secret entrance to the palace. Now they're throwing away around magic spells, turning people's clothes different colors. Alcaster was killed during the uprising. Many knights were injured and are currently being tended to in clinics and hospitals around the town. Wait, Alcast- wait, Alcaster was killed? <gasps> so this is gonna be a Mythos villain arc? I was getting tired of Alcaster being the main villain. I am all for this. Please kill Alcaster so Mythos doesn't die. I'm all for this change of plot. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Please don't be a psych out. After his explanation, I feel even worse than I did in the main room. I stare at Waltz at a loss. What, a Fritz? Let me see, I can't find my minion candy. Welp. Probably cause I threw it away. Fritz? Think I'll have the stone ocean part, but we change it from a prison to your maid weapon. <laughs> Sir Alcaster's son. Wasn't Alcaster only the villain in one arc? Wasn't he also the villain in Rod's arc too? Like he was more prominently the villain in uh, Karma's route. But him and Mithras were working together in Rod's route. And then uh, in Karma's route, he killed Mithras, if I recall correctly. So only natural for Mithras to kill Alcaster in one of the routes. I'm all for this. Fitzgerald. He was my personal knight. My chevalier, one might even say. If Sir Alcaster was killed during the uprising, where did that pert Fritz? Was he working with Sir Alcaster? Or with Sir Mithros? That's a good question. The Stone Ocean part comes out in December, when the next four episodes come out on Netflix and then gets put on hiatus again for another year because it's not like we've been waiting for Stone Ocean to be animated for years. I'm not mad, I promise. <laughs> I see you have a lot to unload there with Stone Ocean, Barn. 
Let it all out. We're, we're here for you. Did he escape? I'm sorry, princess. I haven't heard anything about a knight named Fitzgerald. Was he... killed? Probably not. He's a, he's a main love interest. Not even Rod dies, even though his plot has the looming thing of death coming over him for his little mermaid curse. You see, Mithras was the main villain and the Rod root in the end. True. Though I, get, I always considered it as them working together. But hey, I'm all for it. I'm all for there to being two plots where Mithros is the main villain. Maid Mansion, sorry. No, you found it, no! I don't wanna check Discord. Why'd you have to show me the minion candy? At least you put it on a 2B pillow. That's good. If I gotta see something cursed, at least let me see something blessed. All right. The thought makes my heart plummet. I've been waiting for Stone Ocean to get animated. I mean, I guess I have in so far as I was hoping we would get to SBR as fast as possible. Ooh. No, Fritz could not possibly be dead. I have to believe that he's still alive. I feel Chevalier's hand on my shoulder briefly before it slides off. Are there any of the king's knights remaining in the palace? If they are, then they've either been forced to turn against the king or they've been killed. Is Mithros sitting on the throne? Yeah, that was what he was doing in Rod's route too. I guess they're all after the throne because Alcaster was also after the throne. No. He usurped the king, but hasn't taken- Oh wait, no! Mithros wants to take over so he can put Lucette on the throne. Alcaster wants to be king of the throne. That's their difference in character motivations. I still want to have Elio dress up as Junko when it gets to killing Barn to keep things canon. I will miss you though, Barn. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It will happen someday. Someday. Waltz turns to me and his expression softens. Why SBR in particular? Steel Ball Run rules. It's top three JoJo parts, probably top two. Ooh. I hope I get reanimated as a canopy that gets put over barbecue stands. Why? Bun won't miss me. You say that, Barn, but I would actually miss you. I mean, I'll still kill you, because I want to be the one that kills you if you gotta die. But I'll miss you. Don't worry, I'll, I'll keep like, one of your, like, fingers in a jar to remember you by. Princess, feel free to ask me whatever you want. I'm sorry I didn't answer all of your questions earlier. I have so many questions, but I suppose I'll ask them one at a time. Hmm, what happened to the king and the other? Okay, does this matter? Does this matter what I choose? Let's see. I'd miss you. Yeah, if he shot at you, he'd miss you. <laughs> no, I won't miss. I will not miss. Okay. Don't like the how loud that sound is. <laughs> I will forever hate you for the death of Twy. Twy's still here though. What has happened to the king and the others? I'm not sure. From what I've heard, the king and his family, your family, are still alive. Hmm. I never cared for any of my step family, but hearing that they're okay is still a relief. Mithros may be keeping them prisoner for now. Elio, I've played Apex with you. You would miss. You say that, but I'm actually good at shooting IRL. I've done like a shooting the bottles. Like with a gun, like with a with a pellet gun, and I'm actually pretty good, a pretty good shot IRL. I'm just bad at it in video games. I swear, I'm not even lying. I would like to go do some more shooting with pellet guns sometime. Shoot some targets. What is the glamour that Sir Mithros used? Dolores steps in to answer the question. 
I never cared for any of my step family. I wish the Lord was in my step family. I'm not even lying. He lied. I'm not. I'm seriously not. <laughs> a glamour is a high level magic used to conceal one's identity. It keeps even other witches from sensing you. Parfait cast the same magic on you shortly after you came to the tavern. It was to protect you from the evil witches. I'm not Count Olaf, said Count Olaf. Oi! Oi, I'm not Count Olaf! <laughs> A glamour can only be conjured by the powerful witches. It sounds as if this witch has been using glamour to hide himself from others. Hmm, do you know Mithros? It was a long time ago. We both shared the same teacher. Teacher? Wait. Targets, you mean unarmed civilians? Yeah, that sounds like him. Hey! The only unarmed civilians I would target would be Barn, and Twy, and the people of chat, possibly, if you guys bully me. <laughs> You have the same energy as Count Olaf, Elio? How the fuck do I have the same energy as Count Olaf from Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events? Explain! Explain! How am I like Count Olaf? If you like my food, I posted in the Discord server. Also, should I grab my cherry milk? Grab your cherry milk. The sour cream one actually looks really good because I like sour cream. <laughs> Don't like the the one that you did earlier though. The one a couple of days back. Waltz, are you a a witch? Yeah. I'm proud to be the same level as Barn in your hit list. <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm not gonna shoot Barn. I'm gonna stab him. I made a promise. He smiles at me, but it's weak and does not reach his arm. His eyes, his arms. <laughs> yeah. The smile doesn't reach his arms. Yeah, arm smile. Elias von Bunn of the Empire of Hops of Saturn. Third in line for the throne and savior of 12 systems. Ah, I see you've got in my lore memos. Thank you, Barn. Myth was always very competitive. I thought that he had died at the end of the Great War, but he's been in the palace this whole time. He's an absolute nutter, as are you. I may admit, I have my moments, but I never want to be compared to an old man such as Count Olaf because of that. Can you at least compare me to a bad bitch? <laughs> his disguise is so simple I should have realized his name was so similar But <laughs> this is like Like uh, Sailor Moon and shit Like oh, I should have known that she was Sailor Moon She's got the same exact hairstyle Her name's Serena in the English dub That's Moon You couldn't have helped it That's what the glamour does to you Her name's Usagi where do bunnies live on the moon? So you're gonna stab Barn? What's the point of Gun Elio then? Everyone shot by Gun Elio follows and subscribes to the bun. It's a fealty pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Barn, I love you sometimes. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe if I wasn't cursed, if I had more of my magic, I would have been able to sense him. What route are you on right now? I'm on uh, Chevalier, aka Rumpel's route. Who has claimed the crown? As of right now, no one. The king's been kicked off the throne, and Mithros has made a public announcement about usurping the throne, but he does not call himself king. Yeah, he wants to put Lucette on the throne. If previous roots are any indication. I never want to be compared to an old man like Count Olaf. Count Olaf 2022. Shut up! Is he trying to win the throne over for someone? Myth has no one left. 
He was obsessed with our teacher, but she is gone. Oh, Lucette's mom, I'm guessing? You can be Beetlejuice then. I don't want to be Beetlejuice! Give me someone, like, attractive! Maybe he has different alliances now? Maybe if I wasn't cursed. Well, it's saying what chat should be saying. <laughs> yeah, y'all too cursed. What's wrong with you guys? You guys are the real Count Olaf's around here. Parfait's eyes look distant as she stares dismally down at the ground. I see, I see. I saw Waltz and no Rumple. I wondered if you switched to his route now. Ah, oh, no. We're just having a, like, exposition being thrown at us for, like, the end of route invasion of the castle. <laughs> if my curse were broken, I would charge in right now and destroy him. Waltz's expression becomes so dark it sends a shiver through me. It isn't like Waltz to look so angry. You said it? He can't take it back now? You all, what did you clip? I wish now you would pee on me, Lappy. What did you just say? Oh my God, my, sorry, my alarm just went off. Whoops. I think that was for yesterday. I must have said it for a different time. Stop. <laughs> what, what is this clip? What did you clip? What did you clip, Barn? Pretty sure you saying I love you at times, Barn. Oh God. You did clip it. <laughs> we need to come up with a plan. Even if you weren't cursed, you would still not be able to defeat Mithros when he has other witches with him. And witches are trickier to handle. Can't just be plunged through with a sword, eh? I agree with Karma. If all of us go in with swords and shields, we should be able to take the palace right back. But what about the X and the Y? I don't know. This is what we've been practicing for. I clearly only clipped the fealty pistol part. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> practicing. It's fine, Elio is a soon. <laughs> Even witches will die if you stick a sword through their heart, won't they? With swords and shield Pokemon. Elio, stop copying me! <laughs> How do we have this? How do we have this brain connection? Why? <laughs> oh my god. But getting to a witch who knows you're there is difficult. I must do something. Hmm, I want to help or is there anything I can do to help? Which one is the better option here? Oh, thank you for the change hairstyle, Asila. God, I don't know. What? These are both essentially the same thing. Because we're expressing our desire to help. I guess I want to help it is a bit more like proactive and is there anything I can do to help is maybe I could see like two ways of this going I want to help being like oh yeah I'm proactive about wanting to help and then is there anything I can do to help could be pretty much the same thing or it could also be like people getting upset at me because they don't want me to help because I'm Possibly related to the reason Mithros assert the throne? I don't know. I don't know. Alright. I'm gonna choose I wanna help though. I feel like that might be better. I don't know. Chevalier wraps his finger around my wrist and frowns. Ah! Ah! He's upset because I wanna help. Ah! Now I know that Elio is a caster simp, so we are bound by blood. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm excited for the next update. <laughs> I need more caster content. I did in fact play the spicy version after stream, by the way, chat. So, uh, Twy, when you said that I was going offline to play it, you were right. <laughs> Got me too, buddy. I'm excited about the other characters too, because apparently there are gonna be like, a, a couple new characters added to an update. So that'll be fun. 
princess. This whole time I've been living at the Marchen, I was spared the fate of the royal family by sheer coincidence because I was cursed. I cannot just sit here and do nothing while the kingdom falls to a witch. It fell to witches before and there were dire consequences. I cannot continue to be passive. I... I will not let myself be like mother. Princess, it's... Please let me do this. I am Lucette Riella Britton, the Crown Princess of Angiel, and I will not stand by and watch when the kingdom is in turmoil. I feel this, though. Like, she... I... She doesn't want to be like her mom. I, I know that feeling. There'll be several, yes. Hmm. Try being able to predict Elio. What a surprise. <laughs> to predict? We had a mind connection there. The room goes quiet at my statements. Chevalier's fingers loosen on my hand. I can see a ghost of a smile on his face, though it underlies his sorrow. Woohoo. Spoken like a true princess. Okay, I did do the right thing. Thank goodness. Okay. Okay, I chose the right option. Let's go. Whether or not you want to help, princess, you really can't. You won't be able to use magic until your 18th birthday. Well, I mean, it's coming up, ain't it? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's why Mithras took over the castle now. That's when you become the bearer. I cannot let that stop me. I will find a way. The conversations in the room continue for a long while. At some point, it's said that volunteers are needed at the hospitals and clinics for the injured s soldiers. I just want to say something. I wish that there was a route where you... C well, no. Never mind. Nah, never mind. That was a bad idea. Savaldi immediately volunteers. Only afterwards does he look at me with regret. Oh, he's worried. Princess, I'm sorry. I did the right thing. Are you talking about playing the spicy version? Yes! <laughs> it was very good. I really liked the Yandere ending a lot. Because <laughs> I, I tend to like the more, uh, um... Like, gory endings compared to, like, the more, um... Erotic endings, cause so like I liked the more Yandere ending <laughs> of the spicy version. <laughs> For what? If you had to explain the endings by perhaps tags, uh, Yandere ending, uh, he pushes you on a bed, opens up your shirt, and carves his name on your chest with a knife. Were there any interesting tags? Ah, uh, it was pretty basic for the, um, for the, uh, the actual, like, uh, sexual content, um, in it. Like, it, it was, uh, like, there wasn't anything shown, uh, for one. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I was confused and way behind. Elio played spicy version of something? Yeah, the, the game that I played a while, like, a few days ago. Darling Duality. Extremely. It's just foreplay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just foreplay. <laughs> but yeah, I liked the one where he pushes you on the bed, opens your shirt, and carves his name on your chest. Also, Elliot, it was basic. I'm sorry, what? No, I was talking about the other ending, the sweet ending, with the actual, like, sexual content. Like, that didn't have any sexual content. Uh, for the Young Dede ending. I mean, I guess the tearing your shirt open, uh, thing. But it was to carve his name with a, a, with a knife. Why is... I'm gonna turn off my phone. Stop, stop having alarms go off. Ah, uh, yes, the most basic of foreplay, knife play. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to you that's basic, I understand. Oi. For putting my job before you. And after all, I just said, he told me he was going to try his best to change. Rhea called him selfless before I for putting his work before her, but what's a five play then? When you play patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Elio likes his yandere's, I do. 
You would be a fool not to. <laughs> My life is not in any danger, and there are people who need you more than I do. Of course it was something to do with a knife. <laughs> what do you mean? Elio, I feel like that's low-key curse. Five play means that you're playing with, like, your hands. Like, in a clap, because you got five fingers. So it's patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Do, do what you do best, Chevalier. Elio! <laughs> Princess Lucette. Sure, but five is after four. Yeah, five play. Is patty cake, patty cake, baker's man? Because you got five fingers. I promise you I'll do whatever I can to help you as well. As the meeting disbands, I'm left standing there in quiet. The last to leave is Walt, who promises me that he will make things right. Hard play is just the knife game you play by tapping the knife between your fingers, except you play it on a person's stomach. <laughs> if Elio gets a partner, they will be so confused. <laughs> hey, you wanna you wanna do five play? What the fuck is that? It's the next step up from four play. We're playing patty cake, patty cake, bakers, man. I'm going to trust everyone, but I'm also not going to stand idle. I'll make things right somehow. As is my responsibility as crown princess. I love multiplayer knife games. <laughs> Alright, the witch puppet. One more chapter and then we're finishing his route. Ah, another long night. The two of us are on our way back to the Marchant after visiting a clinic in town. We were there for hours, and it's a relief to be out in the open now, where I can feel the wind on my skin. Are you okay, Princess? I know that when you what you saw must have been difficult. I'm sorry I couldn't shield you from the majority of it. I volunteered to help Chevalier at the clinic part-time, but it's worse than I had expected. Many of the soldiers have severe wounds. I had thought that most of the injuries sustained by the knights during the upheaval were only minor. But I was wrong. Their injuries are much worse. You're gonna cook your significant other? You know what? That checks out. <laughs> well, you guys think that if I get a... Like, if I date someone... I'm just gonna, like, bake them alive and put them, like, in a gigantic cauldron and alchemize them... something. <laughs> Who, I will now find out what he looks like so I can draw fan art as his name looked like Reindeer when I first ho heard it. <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking about Caster from Darling Duality, a game I played recently. Yes? What? That's your impression you have of Mage Y? I would want to do like... I, want, I would want access to their blood. I don't want to cook them alive because then I might miss out on their blood. I want to I drain them of it. Princess. He reaches out and laces his fingers through mine, then gives me a soft smile as he squeezes my hand. Are you okay? I'm fine. It's only been one day since the uprising at the palace. I had thought that there would be less blood. I was wrong. Is this what things were like after the Great War? I wasn't a fully certified doctor after the Great War, but I was an assistant. It was far worse than this, princess. We cannot have a repeat of the Great War. I, I don't know why Mithros would kill Sir Alcaster and take the throne without claiming the throne, but... Because he's a bad bitch, and I love him. No, with all your vor talk, I knew you would be eating them in some way or another. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Maida is not visibly normal. <laughs> 
the witches already have a bad name, and he's making it worse. On the first date, hey, so I have a question. How do you feel about knives in the bed chambers? Honestly, like, uh, this is weird talking about like kink shit. Honestly, um, but like, um, if I were to date someone, I would straight up be like, hey, I got no interest in like sexy time stuff. Um, but would it be all right if like I could drag like a, a knife across skin at some point? Cause I don't know what <laughs> you guys are gonna think I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna talk anymore. <laughs> I cannot help but remember the wide smiles Mithras gave me when I was still living in the palace. It, it'd be like that, Bun. Thank you. <laughs> Every time I felt his eyes on me, I felt there was something strange about him. You've already mentioned it before, actually. I, I don't, I just... <laughs> Does Ellie want to feel the kiss of steel or deliver it? Both, honestly. I would like to knife you. I have a crush, but I don't want to say who. Elio, I would like to knife you. Also, Elio, <laughs> God. <laughs> there is always a cloudiness to his eyes. Something unreadable. He was excellent at his job, but always an enigma outside of it. A sudden breeze chills my skin. Let's go back before you freeze out there. A crush? More like a stab! <laughs> God damn it. Elio is gaining my respect. A stab? More like an impale. God! <laughs> See, this is why I'm not dating anyone. You guys will probably like the moment I'm, I'm like, Hey, I'm dating someone. You guys are gonna be like, Ah, I see. They're getting stabbed by Elio. <laughs> Since I have been staying at the Marchand, I've not seen Rod once. I was never sure if it was because he was ignoring me, or if it was because he only wanted to speak to Parfait. Regardless, I hope Rod and his family are okay. Oh, thank you, Yen. Elio wants to use the Devil Stinger. <laughs> What's the Devil Stinger? <laughs> I never wish this treatment upon anyone, not even to ones I hated. As we walk, I glance up at Chevalier, his head is tilted skyward. I catch the glimmer of lights in his eyes and smile. Even for just a moment, I can forget about everything when I'm beside him. He has a way of taking the weight off my shoulders. But as the crown princess, I cannot let others carry my burden for me. Oh, devil may cry. Oh, okay. I must find ways to protect the others. Even if it means putting myself in danger or harming someone in order to protect someone else. <laughs> one more thing on that is I have one favorite among my collection. It's a bat and unfolds with a satisfying spring click. Ooh, that sounds awesome. I know I've got like, um, I have a crescent knife that I really like. I call it my moon knife. What do you think is the easiest and fastest way to kill someone? This conversation... <laughs> this conversation is leaking into the game. I want to stab you. <laughs> Not Allo. <laughs> Chevalier's body goes rigid beside me. He stops to stare at me, wide-eyed. Feels incredible to handle, honestly. Yeah, I really like knives. I probably wouldn't start like a, a big knife collection, but I like knives. They're cool. I find myself fiddling with a knife a lot when I, when I just like see it. I'm like, hmm, hmm. I'm asking just in case I'm ever in danger. I, I've never fought anyone before. I can retaliate, but I don't know how to actually harm anyone. To kill someone is to end a life. It is stealing away a life that others might love. Oh, Mr. Dr. Chevalier coming in here. Moon Knife? The sequel to Moon Knight. <laughs> I'm not trusted with knives, but I got a large knife, like the one from Alice Madness Returns. Sadly, it's dull, though. Oh, that's awesome. 
I have a start of a collection, but no case. I want to expand it. I need some Damascus steel. Ooh, Damascus. Asylo, welcome home, Jackie! You just get off work? You bear the burden of that death for the rest of your life. I pull myself away from them. But Mithros is not an innocent man. I don't know how to harm anyone. I decay, Lucette. You hurt a lot of people at the beginning of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, you may not have hurt them physically, but you hurt them mentally for sure, Lucette. And sometimes that's worse than hurting physically. Would you rather he kill the royal family instead? No, it's not that, princess. I know he must be stopped at any cost. It's just... I would never want you to have to kill someone. How would you know what it was like to kill someone? You've only ever helped people, not hurt them. You saw the soldiers in the clinic today. You saw how close some of them were to death. Did you see the hollow look in their eyes? I've seen that look many times. It's the look of a man who clings desperately to life. Every life is precious. And a life is still a life, whether it's vile or not. There's still a responsibility you have to bear. Okay, I get what you're saying here, Chevalier. But if that person is resulting in the deaths of a bunch of people, is it still valid for that person to be alive, especially if they continue to get away with it? Sometimes the laws and shit can't, like, do anything for people like them. I I'm like, <laughs> I, I understand where Chevalier is coming from for this, but sometimes these people can't be forgiven. And if someone wants to kill that person, because like, I don't know, maybe they killed their family or something, like, like I wouldn't say it's a good thing that you killed someone, but I would say it would be understandable if you would want to kill someone that killed your family, you know? If you would want someone that killed people that you love to be dead, kind of, you know? I know how valuable and fragile lives are because I've helped so many people. And like, I get it. No matter the most vile person, there's always going to be someone that loves them. But also, if they're taking away lives of other people, then it's like, you know? Uh, getting, getting a bit uh, philosophical here, but... Oh yeah, Angels of Death is getting an Identity V. I'm very interested in that. <laughs> oh yeah, Bungo Stray Dogs. Yeah, wasn't there like an announcement on Bungo? Oh yeah, Fatal Frame, yeah. There was like a thing on Fatal Frame for Identity V too. Mm -hmm. Lucette to Mithros, you wanna be now, yeah? Mithros sobs uncontrollably. I feel like it's a matter of justifiable and correct. Yeah. I actually was watching a video the other night about a Sonic, um, the Sonic comics. And there was that whole moral quandary between uh, Sonic and Shadow. Because in... Uh, I, I'm not sure if I, I actually have the right name for it. But it's like the more recent Sonic comics. Uh, in, like, in the first issue or whatever, like, Eggman loses his memories and becomes Mr. Tinkerer. And, like, Sonic has, like, a, a moral quandary on, on whether, like, Eggman should get away with, like, living a peaceful life after all the things that he's done. And he's like, well, he's not himself anymore. He's changed. He's Mr. Tinkerer now. He doesn't have his memories of doing that. So, like, I don't know if he, he should, like pay for the crimes he committed that he doesn't remember. And then like Shadow shows up and he's like, no, it doesn't matter. He's Eggman. He'll probably go back to being it again and he'll he'll still cause suffering. Like you shouldn't forgive him for all the, the shit that he did. And I'm like, y'all y'all both right, honestly. It it really depends. It really depends on like what the person has done. But like I understood so both completely like like, Shadow, like, the shit Eggman has done, like, completely understandable, especially from Shadow's point of view. So, like, they were both right in their own ways. And that, that's, that's the shitty thing about, you know, humanity and stuff. They're, 
there ain't black and whites for the most part. There's gray zones, you know. You have to really come to a conclusion on what you personally believe. And it's not like a, it's not a, a matter of right or wrong. Like no one's almighty right or all, almighty wrong. You just got to go with what you believe in, kind of. I love Shadow the Hedgehog, yes. <laughs> But yeah, I really liked that whole, like, thing between them. The world is a place where only the strong survive. People are kind, but they will take advantage of those who are too caring. Rumpel doesn't want Lucette to cross the line since it would impact Lucette herself. True, true. The bigger issue is that people treat it as black and white, even though there are a lot of shades of gray. Pun not intended. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. I get you. Yeah, it's all it's always it's always hard when seeing this in like fiction because I'm like I get both of you Bria told me that Chevalier was so selfish so so, so bleh, bleh, that Chevalier was so selfless He became selfish. She told me that he never had anything because he gave everything to others I'm Gonna tangent real quick. All right, y'all ready for me to tangent over my boy shadow and his arc in 06? Of course feel free to Especially because I was just talking on a tangent about Sonic. <laughs> His kindness has hurt others, and I fear that it has a likely chance to hurt him as well. But what if his reluctance to hurt anyone causes him to be the one that is injured? My copy of Amori came in today. I paid like 33 for a physical copy and a singular photo of Basil tagging Amori. Absolutely worth paying the extra 22. Ooh, nice. I still gotta get Amori. On Switch. Maybe when I get paid on Thursday. Chevalier suddenly breaks the silence. Yeah, my, my therapist actually had a talk with me. Because I was talking about some personal stuff with her. And she told me that I need to spend more money on myself. I need to, like, treat myself to stuff. I, I, I'm constantly thinking, like, I need to save money. I can't buy this. I need to save money. But... I'm going to try and spoil myself a bit more on my next paycheck. I'm going to buy more games, you know? <laughs> Most people think that the easiest way to kill a person is to stab them through the heart. No one can change my mind, but Mephiles is Shadow's perfect foil. And here's why. Please, I would love to read this. As long as you don't really talk about Sonic's arc, there's a certain aspect I really dislike. Ooh, I see. There's nothing wrong with giving yourself a little treat now and then. Yee yee, yeah! Like, I was talking to her about, about a bunch of stuff and why I wasn't, like, doing stuff for myself. And she was like, you need to, you need to, like, set aside, like, $20 every paycheck or, or something to give yourself something nice. I was like, okay. <laughs> Those people would be wrong. He puts his hand over his heart and stares dismally down at the ground. He removes his hand briefly, but only to reach for mine. Mephiles generally fucking unnerves Shadow. He makes him question himself and generally gets under his fucking skin. He also properly challenges Shadow to grow into himself, while also trying to isolate him at the same time. But Shadow actually chooses to rely on Rouge and Omega more out of trust and growth with them. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I've been watching like- Oh, nice CG! He takes my hand and settles it on his chest, slightly to the left. I can hear the beating of his heart beneath my palm. It's soft and gentle. What can you feel besides the beating of my heart? The... Ribs? <laughs> what is this called? Yes. In order to stab the heart, you have to get through the ribs. That's why most of the soldiers in there who got stabbed in the chest are still alive. I love this totally romantic moment that we're having right now, Chevalier. If you want to quickly kill someone, you have to stab somewhere where it would be difficult to stem the blood from a wound. Do you have any idea where that might be? The abdomen or the neck? Oh god, what, what answer does he want me to give though? Does he want me to be right? Like... Should I be... 
Should I be right about this? Like, abdomen or neck? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's a really true romance if you're not talking about murder. Neck? All right, I'll try out Nick. I'll try out and see if he wants me to answer that way. The skin on the neck is thinner and you have lots of blood flow underneath the skin, going right to your head. I by no means think 06 is a good game. I die on this hill by saying that Mephiles is Shadow's perfect foil and should be generally brought back in some way in a future Shadow game. That would be nice. I, I really want more like, um, Sonic, like, um, side games that feature like the other characters. Like I saw someone mentioning that like, uh, you know how like Knuckles is holding uh, in like adventure and all that, um, how he would actually be really good for like an adventure game, kind of like Breath of the Wild, kind of like the Sonic Frontier, but like not like Sonic Frontier, but like one with Knuckles as the main character, like going around and exploring. Cause like his moveset and all that is perfect. For like a like Breath of the Wild or something, that'd be nice. I would love a Knuckles game. Yeah, Knuckles is really sidelined. Like, I would love to see a resurgence in Knuckle content, especially now that the the second movie gave a bit more like Knuckles content out there that doesn't have him be a joke all the time. They only focus on Sonic and Tails and Eggman ever since '06 because it didn't get very well received. Hmm. Yeah. I think they should do more. Like, I understand people are like, oh God, Sonic is experimenting. That never ends well. But I don't know. I would like, I would like more of these characters that don't get that much nowadays to get their own game, you know? It'd most likely be easier to slice or pierce something more vulnerable in the neck without running into as much resistance. Chevalier raises an eyebrow. Sonic Adventure was so good with many characters. No game for me has taught Sonic Adventure to be, but I enjoy Shadow's story development. Mm -hmm. Knuckles really feels like he has his own story outside of Sonic and Co. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten his own spin-off sooner. Yeah, with him being on like Angel Island and everything, like it'd be nice to get like a, a game with him. Did you happen to pick that up around the clinic? No, I simply guessed. <laughs> I mean, besides Mania, every recent Sonic game has been mid. Yeah. Sonic Frontier, you mean Liminal Space Sonic? <laughs> Knuckles Chaotic would like- Oh, that's true! Knuckles Chaotic does exist, but even then, Knuckles isn't so much of a big focus in the- I feel like Chaotic is more of like a focus. The, the Chaotics are more of a focus in that one. And then you have a bright mind, princess. Thank you! Thank you, Callahan. Chevalier moves my hand to the side of his neck. My fingers curl slightly when I feel his heartbeat reverberating beneath my fingers. This part is where you can find the jugular vein and the carotid artery. Yo, Chevalier telling me how to kill him. He runs my fingers down the length of it and I shudder. A mischievous smile brightens his face. I and mean, given the limited story time from that game, true. True. Like, there's only so much you could say with a type of game like that. Not only does cutting at the neck stop blood from going to the head, but it also makes it spurt. You're the one that gave me the answer for the, for the neck. That, that was right. If both the vein and the artery are cut, it only takes a minute to bleed to death. Thus, one of the best ways to kill a person would be through the neck. Okay, I'm glad that he appreciates that I know how to kill a person correctly and efficiently. Thank you, Chevalier. Why are you telling me all this now? Hmm, I was just enlightening a new pupil with an anatomy lesson. You asked me a question, and I responded as a teacher. Now, let me teach you how to poison someone in the fastest way possible without anyone noticing. 
Chevalier's fingers loosen on my hand, and I grasp his hand tighter in response. Princess, I don't want you to have to bear the burden of a murder. We got into a Sonic combo because there was a moral quandary that reminded me of the Sonic comics. <laughs> and then uh, Yen started talking about uh, Shadow, and we just started talking about Sonic. <laughs> just typical stream stuff getting, like, distracted. I promise that I'll protect you, so you don't have to defend yourself with violence. I can't use a sword or magic, and I don't know how to fight, but I will always be there to protect you. I may not have an abundance of muscles beneath these sleeves, but I am a doctor. I may be a doctor, but... No one knows the body better than I, so, though it may not be heroic, I know how to hurt a person. <laughs> She knows how to kill a man. That's so hot. Chevalier and Elio. <laughs> Chevalier, I love a woman who can kick my ass. <laughs> His sincere expression, though pained, tells me that he's telling the truth. I don't want Chevalier to hurt a person either. You say that. You say that, um, Cal, on um, how Amy shouldn't get it, her own game. But I actually think the opposite. I think... We should get more of Amy away from Sonic. I think that would be interesting to see her, like, on her own without Sonic around, you know? Or, like, Sonic is, like, not that big of a thing for her in her own game. I would like to see her as a character more than her obsession over Sonic. I think she has... She can be a good character... When Sonic's not around. I've, like... I, I've recently been, like, getting a bit more into Sonic and stuff. And, like, she has the potential to be a good character. But the problem is that the writers just have her be, like, all about Sonic. But I think she has potential, you know? It would destroy everything that he's worked towards as a doctor. He's seen so much suffering, and yet always seems untouched by it. I'll do anything I can to protect his positivity. <laughs> Why would you apologize for simping for the ultimate life for, right? <laughs> this is why I said I'd never apologize. I'm only saying that, because her theme song and lack of personality, but you got a point. You're right. Literally, all people know about Amy is that she's the biggest Sonic sim. Is there anything else about her, though? Yeah, like, I, I saw, like, her Sonic Adventure, like, storyline, and, like, Sonic wasn't as big, like, of an, a, a thing for her in her storyline, and, like, sure, she didn't do as much as other characters do, especially in, like, the next game, because she was talking to, like, Shadow for a lot of it, but at the same time, she was able to convince Shadow, like, she has, like, some good qualities about her. Like, she can be a good talker to people. She cares about people. She wants to help people out. But she's a bit too, uh, obsessed with Sonic. So I'd like to see her away from Sonic. The march was quiet when we returned. Everyone had already disappeared into their rooms, and so I went straight to mine. Whose stream is lagging right now? Oh, God. Oh, oh, jeez. So everyone's having an... Heh. <laughs> oh, God. Stream is having an issue? Oh, God. Hold on. Let me close out of some programs, then. Uh, no, no more bunking. I'm gonna close out of tits. My bitrate seems to be fine. I don't know what's wrong. It's pausing the... Huh. I hear you talking about Amy's SA1 storyline. Okay. Okay. I'll restart. Okay. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Okay, well, let's do some more of this. Uh, I gotta, gotta splice the, the VODs together. Mouth is lagging a bit, but besides that, it's fine. I mean, my mouth's always lagging. Because <laughs> so I have a bad um, webcam. Anyway. I also forced Shivali to go back to his. He's been on his feet all day and he needs to rest. Let me know if you have any problems for the rest of the stream. You have a huge problem. Twice in your chat. I mean, that's an acceptable program. I, I can work with this. I can work with this. <laughs> I plopped down onto my bed as soon as we returned home. I glanced briefly to the side where Chevalier's bouquet is in the vase parfait had given to me. Who is it? Parfait. Come in. He returned. Parfait looks paler than normal. I realized with a start that Chevalier did not tend to her at all today. Oh boy. Don't look at me like that. I'm fine. How are the soldiers at the clinic? Not good. Many of them have been gravely wounded. Some say they remembered magic. Others say they don't remember anything at all. A shadow falls over Parfait's expression as she sighs. Twy, wanna know what I miss being able to bonk Elio? I miss it. <laughs> yeah, just for anyone coming in bonk, um, I don't have the program up for bonking, so, uh, I might not, uh, give you back your points right away, but when, when, if I see that you do a bonk, I'll try and like refund you if it's still available. Hopefully it's not. But yeah. So the circumstances are direr than we thought. It's a good thing Chevalier is there to lend a helping hand. Did you all manage to come up with a plan? It's proving more difficult than we anticipated. Delore and I are willing to put ourselves in danger. Waltz is too, because he can use magic to a certain extent. The knights and karma have their blades. But Chevalier... I don't want to involve him in this. But he's your knight! Because you're worried about him. That's what his name literally means. It paused for a bit. That could definitely just be me... Uh oh. Oh, okay. I guess I'll be getting rid of uh the chameleon too. So no no color swaps now. Maybe removing the model. I'll do that if this doesn't fix things. Let's see. Goodness. Hey, pre-roll ads are on oh wait. I just closed out of it and it looks like my video quality went to excellent after being unstable. So I'm gonna wait a few seconds. Uh, Cinderella phenomenon might be a lot with the model. Really? Do we tend to have like technical issues during Cinderella? I always forget. Yeah, no bunks, no camel, what? No, no, no color. Now I just need the story of the class trial. Yeah, I have no clue how to disable the redemptions. I can pause color wheel at least. Okay, that that is good enough for me. All right, but yeah. Um, how is it now? It says the quality is excellent. Hmm. Seems good? Okay. Alright. It's fine, and yeah, your hair is white. Okay, nice. Quality is already excellent, Elio. You're here. <laughs> ah, thank you! Alright. Hopefully we don't get another issue. Okay. Of course I am. You've grown, princess. You remind me of a younger Hilder. Oh, see you in a bit, some dwarf. Enjoy your shower. Back then, Hildur was both calm and resilient. One moment, she could be smiling ear to ear. The next, she could be strict and unmovable as the coldest ice. They're talking about Lucette's mom, by the way, for those that don't know. 
The two of us were like sisters. We did so much together. We learned together, explored the kingdom together. Hopefully we don't get another issue. Don't worry, I still don't know how to clone myself. <laughs> Elio, your hair is white like snow and quality is fine. Oh, thank you. I can say with all certainty that we were the best of friends. And then the fairy tales happen. When healed, oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this is her mom. When Hildir killed the first human, she was corrupted. Her darkness shall swallowed her whole. I don't remember a time before Mother was corrupted, and so I cannot remember. Imagine the woman Parfait describes. I know the old Hildir would have wanted to show you the beauty in things, Princess. She would not want you to suffer. I'm sorry you became so embroiled in things, so wait, was like our mom? Like all along just like possessed by the darkness that she resided over? This is another moral quandary. Is she Eggman or is she Mr. Tinkerer? It was inevitable. If Delora hadn't cursed me, then I would still be in the palace and I would be just as helpless as everyone else. So, while I'm out here, I have the responsibility to help everyone. I touched the incomplete glass slipper at my neck. I still haven't even done three good deeds. Don't look so sad. You will complete your three good deeds and things will go back to normal. <laughs> if I turn into anyone, that's gonna be a problem. Time paradox is not a fun thing to play with. What? Time paradoxes are fun! Tinker, I hardly know her. <laughs> Darkness? Are you playing Smash? <laughs> and of course, you'll still have friends here when you return. You are the Darkness. You are the Heartless. And come your 18th birthday, Delora and I will teach you about magic. Waltz is eager to help too. But for now, our top priority is a plan. Rest easy, princess. Things will work out. It's hard to believe that this problem could be so easily solved, but I'll try to believe. When Parfait leaves, I'm left to my own thoughts. I hope everyone at the palace is okay, and that they can hold on until we come up with our plan. But I feel like we're already running out of time. Oh, segue! Days go by and I find myself assisting Chevalier at times. Other times, I remain at the march end to help conceptualize a plan. None of our plans have actually shown any promise yet, but with all our minds put together, we should be able to come up with something. A week later, I find myself standing outside the clinic door, Waiting for Chevalier. If I make a Kingdom Hearts reference, I know Elio got my back. <laughs> I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Princess. You can drop the title, you know. Lisette, but you are a princess in my eyes. <laughs> Simp. Wonder why it's called Kingdom Hearts and not Kingdom Spades or Diamonds or Clovers. Hmm, that's a good question. It could be called Kingdom Spades because of the, the dark, the dark heartless that take over people's hearts. They could have called them Spades because a spade is just a heart that's upside down and, and dark. Yes, but you don't need to address me by title. I know why they don't call it Diamonds, though. Because no one wants to call themselves Kingdom Diamonds and be associated with it, the, the diamond part of the card suits after Toma ruined that. Just my name is fine. Chevalier reaches out to take my hand, then immediately pulls his hand back, eyes wide. Yeah, no, no lewd stuff here. You're spadeless. <laughs> ah, I forgot it. You're cloverless. You're diamondless. You got no money. You're a poor person. That that that's the enemies of Kingdom Diamonds, because they take away your diamonds. 
So you become a poor person. And it's poor people that take away stuff from people because they don't got nothing. So everyone is just poor. So basically what I'm saying is Kingdom Diamonds is America. Ah, I forgot it. Forgot what? The medicine that I needed per for Parfait. Give me a moment, Prince Lucette. Chevalier plants a quick kiss on my forehead before running inside. I stare at the stars as I wait. Hmm? So poor people are enemies in KD. But also we are poor. It's like a, it's a rough thing. It's like we don't, we don't. <laughs> I don't know how to explain my thought process. Like the, the diamond lists are taking diamonds, but they're also poor. And like, we have diamonds, but we don't have too many diamonds. I don't know, I don't know. I turn, but see no one walking around the plaza. I inch closer towards the door of the clinic as I take another look around. Boo. Ah! I suddenly see the silhouette of a man. He takes a few more steps towards me, then stops in front of me. Oh, it's Mr. Sexy Man! Hello! Hello, nurse! I recognize him immediately. His appearance left quite an impression on me the last time. Skittermoosh! It's not Skittermoosh! Out at night by yourself? Certainly you know that wolves prowl these streets at night. Are you one of those wolves? What do you want? I take a step back and press myself to the door. I reach for the door handle, but the man reaches out a hand to grab my wrist. Holding it to the door. Is this a Kabedon? Sir? Hmm, I'd say my answer to that question is complicated, princess. This dude looking good. He really do be do. <laughs> By the expression on your face, I must have hit the nail right on the head, eh? You're the princess. Is that a Kabe Down Miyuki Shirogane original? <laughs> How do you know who I am? Mr. Sexy Man, stop talking about me! You're Mr. Sexy Man, Toy? What? This is part of the mystery, isn't it? I attempt to wrestle my wrist out from his fingers. Come with me quietly and you won't get hurt. Ah! Oh god, do I go with him quietly? Part of me wants to go with him quietly, but another part of me is like, I'm, I'm doing Chevalier's route. I swear I don't know if Elio is intentionally roasting me and doing it by accident. God, ah. Uh, should I scream for help or go quietly? Whenever I talk about myself with self-deprecation... <laughs> oh, he just laughs, they're so, so true. Ah, no. Call myself Mr. Sexy Man and I've never heard Elliot is so confused. Oh, I'm so sorry. Alright. Uh, I think I'm gonna scream for help. I refuse to go anywhere with him. I open my mouth to scream, but before I can even breathe, the man's hand flies to my mouth. You're a disobedient one, aren't you? I struggle against his grasp. It does not take long for the grin to fall from his face. It's replaced with a look that lacks any amusement. I enjoy seeing you struggle, but I'm afraid we've been out here for too long. I can struggle some more if you want me to! <laughs> I bang my shoulder against the door and a resounding creak follows my attempt. 
Okay, I did right. Okay. I figured. No more n Mr. Nice Guy. No more Mr. Nice Twy. The man opens a small vial right in front of my face. Something sweet wafts in the air and I suddenly feel myself falling into darkness as I clap. Okay, I don't like this. Don't like that. Not a fan of that. Ah, so I'm back home. Yeah, drugging. Not not a fan of that, sir. Where am I? Well, we're back at our house, so that must mean that he was working for Mithros, who wants us to be on the throne. I glance around me. <laughs> My room. I look around cautiously, checking to see if anything in my room is different. Mm -mm. The last time I was here was before I was cursed. How is it that this room is the same? Are you sure we're home and not a fake one? I'm pretty sure the plot's going with the... He kidnapped Lucette because he's working for Mithros. And Mithros took over the, the thing because he wants Lucette to become... Like, the next evil queen. Like, he wants to corrupt her. Sleeping Beauty has awoken. Uh, my curse is Cinderella, actually. I move to stand up before realizing that my legs are numb. Shame to see you so easily tamed, princess. Near, I thought it would be fun. I glance up to look at the man, who is now standing right at my bedside. How do you know who I am? Are you a witch? A witch? Me? <laughs> he bursts into laughter. I would rip the witches to shreds if I could. If he could? So he's not a witch. Then you're cursed? The man simply smirks at me, but says nothing in response. He brushes the words aside with a gesture of his hand. You know, I have a feeling like he's uh, the childhood friend. I can't remember what his name is at the top of my head, but the night guy. And that he's like being like a double agent because like his dad got killed or something. Are you working for Mithros? Probably. I glare at his vague answer. It's probably being controlled by Mithros. My name is Varg. And I've been assigned to be your personal knight. See? And they're doing the personal knight thing with him, which makes me think that he's our childhood friend. I already have a personal knight. Yeah, that's me. Oh, you mean Fritz? I got rid of him. Or maybe... Oh... It could be, like, dual personality, too. Could also be it. <laughs> you... No playing with the queen's daughter, Varg. Ah, uh, yes. My, my, the simp of my dead mom. Nice to see ya. Mithros enters the room. Now he stands in the doorway, eyeing the both of us with a smile that is so oddly reminiscent of his usual one that it makes me sick. Mithros. Princess, you look more and more like your mother every day. Why, the scowl on your face is almost a perfect reflection. <laughs> he moves to stand in front of me at the same time. Varg begins to take slow and careful footsteps to the edge of my room. Yeah, I don't like his obsession with Lucette's mom. <laughs> what have you done with everyone? Inconsequential or consequential? Yeah, big yikes. What? Mithros clicks his tongue impatiently. Inconsequential or consequential, people? I narrow my eyes at him. I said his mom isn't even that hot. <laughs> I have no idea who he defines as inconsequential or consequential. Where are the king and the rest of the family? Where is Fritz? Where... Were you the one who killed Sir Alcaster? 
Ah, inconsequential and consequential then. To start, your knight is gone, princess. I've replaced him with Varg here. I'm not so sure about that. I think Varg might also be Fritz. And Alcaster. Or at least sharing the same body as Fritz? Well, we had a common cause at first. We both wanted the crown. Varg! <laughs> it's Stan Varg time, everybody! Sir Alcaster was also betraying the king? I'm not sure, but I have a feeling that Var Varg showed up in all of the other endings. Um, like, he, he shows up working with Mithros and, uh, and Alcaster. And he always seems to wind up coming after Fritz dies. But we never see Fritz die, is the thing. They just say that Fritz is dead. So, like, it makes me think, like, either, like, He's possessed, or like, like maybe he's got like DID or something. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure, but I have a feeling that Varg and Fritz are this, like, you know, in the same body. Now, Alcaster was a brute. He wanted to needlessly kill the royal family and steal the crown for himself. First, I thought he was calm and calculating. But it turns out that he was just a power-hungry fool. Though I did want to take the crown, I wanted to avoid the bloodshed of... certain important people. So Fritz is our true Enroot guy? I don't think he is. I think the true Enroot guy is Waltz. From what I've heard, Waltz's route is the longest route. But Fritz's is the second longest route. And both of their routes are locked. So it also makes me think like we have to see Varg first to kind of... I don't know. I, I think Varg and Fritz are connected somehow. Mithra smiles at me. It's a look that makes my blood run cold. In one route, Fritz had disappeared, then Varg was here, then he disappears, and Fritz appears and tells Alcaster that he is gone. True, yeah. I think Varg, Fritz, and Waltz are connected. I'm not sure about Waltz. I was thinking Varg was connected to either Fritz or Waltz. I guess we haven't seen Fritz and Waltz in the same room just yet. But we do know Waltz's curse is the Peter Pan curse. So we already know kinda a little bit about what's ailing him. And if Fritz is cursed, we don't know what his curse is just yet. It could be something, though it could be something like what Karma did, where uh, they would turn into a wolf, so we don't know. I, I guess anything's possible, really. So I disposed of him and the rest of his knights. Oh, but don't worry, princess. I assure you that your family is resting in their rooms, just like you're resting in yours. I guess my thought process is like, if, if Fritz and Waltz are the same character and they have like two separate roots, but I, I think that could be a possible thing that you could do if they're like completely separate personalities in the same body. Yeah, Karma's Curse was a two-parter, so it's hard to conclude things for sure at the moment. Yeah. What? No, Peter Pan Curse. Do not worry, you will see them shortly for dinner. I have my doubts about Mithros' story, but if what he said was true, then Sir Alcaster wanted to kill the royal family, and Mithros saved them. I don't think they're the same character. I feel like a possibly separate curse merged the two into Varg. Oh, that could be possible, yeah. I do think that they're completely separate characters, but I could definitely see them combining into Varg somehow with a curse. But also at the same time, Waltz was with us uh, in one of the routes, sneaking into the castle, and Varg was in the castle, so he'd have to be like a big zoomer if he was combined with someone. 
So both Waltz and Fritz have a curse. Then not now you're cursed them into combining into Varg. Hmm. I also have a feeling that like Waltz is cursed by Mithros. Right? I'm not sure. Then he decimated the knights and took the royal family hostage? Why would he do such a thing? Cause like, to curse a witch, you have to be a really powerful witch. Maybe there's a condition for them to merge. Oh, maybe. That's a thing. Confused about these fairy tale curses. It's hard to explain it really, but they get cursed by a witch and the curse relates to the fairy tale that the curse is based off. So Lucette has the Cinderella curse and her curse is she, she was a princess. But the way her curse works is it made her from riches to rags, and no one remembers her being royalty, including her own family. Uh, and then, uh, Karma's was the Beauty and the Beast curse, and that was where, that was kind of a two-parter, where he had the thing where, uh, when he dressed up as a man, everyone would fall in love with him, so he would dress up as a woman to not, like, attract people. And then there was also a two-parter to that, to where he turns into a werewolf. And then, uh, uh, da 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 Cavalier's curse is the Rumpelstiltskin curse, and that made him lose his memory, which was a price that he made with a witch in order for her to help out, which kind of mirrors the story of Rumpelstiltskin, because he helps the the character of the story in exchange for taking her first child and then uh rod had the mermaid curse which just straight up took away his voice so yeah it, it's related to the the fairy tale in every way like you can see mirrors for each fairy tale but they're a bit corrupted and they're prisoners then Prisoners in their own home? Nonsense. We're all just awaiting the Queen's return together. The Queen? Slowly, I feel pieces begin to fit together. And I think like Waltz's thing, since he's got the Peter Pan curse, is that he's cursed to be a child. Which is kind of like a re reverse thing, because in Peter Pan, they're, they're glad to be children. The Queen. He cannot be talking about Ophelia. Could someone have the not so drag Neil curse then? <laughs> oh yeah, and the whole his sister will give him a knife to stab his crush with or something. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. That too. He had to kill uh, the person that uh, he was in love with or else he would turn into, um, like, what was it? Into the, the thing, you know, he would die, basically. Delora, do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? Yeah, sea foam, that was it. He would turn into sea foam if he didn't kill her before their wedding. Mother is dead. TB mommy! <laughs> is she really? Yes, yeah, she is TB mommy. You can bring mother back from the dead? We can, princess. Oh, so that's his goal. Of course, of course. He wants to revive her because he's in love with her. Yes, she is. Elio, stop it. <laughs> we? The queen has been resting for a long time, waiting for you to gain your powers so that you can help her escape her prison. You're not making any sense. Oh no, that was Delora, but we call her mommy because we're simps. Uh, but Delora, she like poses our doll at the start of the game until she put a curse on us. And she has like a bigger version that you might have seen earlier. I struggle to keep my words from faltering. How is mother alive? And what does he mean by a prison? Mommy? I'm sorry, mommy? <laughs> The Tenebrae Room is the Queen's prison. It is linked to the Queen's power. 
Though others presumed she was dead, the queen sealed the last of her powers inside the crystal. Delora is hot, but not Lucette's mom. Yes. All she requires is your power, princess. My power? She is mommy, but not Lucette's mommy. When you become the next bearer, you will have the ability to release the queen from her prison. My birthday is in a week. That's when I'm meant to take on the responsibilities of becoming the bearer. Though Parfait and Delora never went into more detail beyond that. You'll finally get to see your mother again, princess. I'm sure you're happy about that one, Mithros. I still cannot quite take in everything he's just said. However, if Mithros had approached me before the curse, I would have helped mother in a heartbeat. But it was Mother who was the last Tenebrarum bearer, and the one who brought darkness to Angiel. I once believed that Mother was the only person to ever love me. Now I know that I was wrong, that she shut me in from a world that I should have known. But still, even now, I wish she was here. I take a deep breath. But I cannot afford to be selfish. I cannot put anyone else in danger. I will not help you. You don't have a choice, princess. Oh boy. I have set the stage for my queen's return. All that's left is to free her from her cage. We will speak more of this at the dining table. Mithros leaves the room, leaving me briefly with Varg. Varg smiles at me beneath his mask, then brings his index finger to the temple of his head and loops it. He mouths the word crazy. Yeah, obsessed with my dead mom, what the hell? You said you would tear witches apart, so why do you serve Mithros? See, that's another thing, if Vargas Fritz, that might be why, because he wants Lucette to live, because they're, they're best friends. I don't know. A good question. You're not going to answer me. How perceptive of you, princess. He mouths the word crazy. Varg is breaking the fourth wall and talking about Elio. What? Varg and Fritz do not seem to be on the same side. True. Would Varg have the jackal and hide curse then? It, that could be it. That could be it. Like, jackal? Yeah. That could be it. That could be the curse that he has. He smirks at me before following Mithros out the door. I am once again left by myself in the room. Everything Mithros just told me swirls through my mind. And I, I feel like he's definitely cursed because he said that he would kill the witches if he could, but he can't. Which makes me think there's a curse that is preventing him from doing anything to them. Like, he might have had, like, an, another, like, spell put on him to make him, uh, be like a servant to them. My mother. And also, um, Fritz's dad is connected with the witches as well. My mother. Alive. And he killed everyone only to take the crown and keep it from her. Me with my fairy tale lore. <laughs> Varg cooperated with Alcaster, but not Fritz. Yeah, well, Fritz hasn't really been around, is the thing. He's definitely cursed. Me or Varg? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta see Fritz and Varg in the same room. Where are they at? A shudder runs through my body. Fritz did defy Alcaster when we did see him, though. Yeah. That's like... I, I think Fritz did it... Kind of because, well, Lucette, for one. Because he's childhood friends with Lucette. And he loves her for it. I, I think he has, like, a childhood friend love for her. And he does have a love for Alcaster, I have a feeling. But 
like it's complicated feelings because he knows Alcaster is not the best person in the world. It's like one of those, like, I love you because you're my family, but I also hate you. You're a terrible person. Is kind of my vibe I'm getting from him. She cannot return. He was killed for it too, yeah! I spend the next hour looking around my room for things that might aid my escape. I know where everybody else's rooms are too, but I have no idea how heavily guarded they are, and I doubt I could help them. I must return to the Marchen. I test the window, but it's locked, probably with magic. I search my shelves. The dolls that used to comfort me can do nothing for me now. Yo, where's the Delora doll? Last, I checked my drawers, but though there are many things in them, there's nothing that looks like it could help me escape. As I'm searching, I come across a box and pause to pick it up. Doll Laura? Yeah! Some beef jerky and hide like the polar opposites. <laughs> I <did. laughs> I remember this. It was given to me by mother with strict instructions not to open it and always keep the key hidden. I search the drawer again for the key. The moment I begin to set the box down, I see a small golden key at the bottom of the drawer. Oh, oh you're, you were saying that um, Jacqueline and Hyde are polar opposites. Yeah, true. I pick it up and I'm about to open the box when I stop. This is hardly a priority now. Yeah, they are, and that's exactly why Yen's theory makes sense. Mm-hmm. They, they're really different in personality. It's hard to really say because, I mean, Fritz hasn't been on screen yet, but he has a completely different personality. I set the key down next to the box. We're just kind of noti noting observations between Fritz and him with his connections and kind of a little bit how he looks. Like he's got different uh, hair color and stuff, but... I should be searching for a way to escape. I turn to see Vark's smiling face at the door. You look like a criminal who's just been caught doing something naughty says the criminal himself, and he has a mask. Yeah, that's another thing. Why would he have a mask if we don't know him at all? Yeah, there's a reason he's hiding his face from us. Like you don't make design choices like that for no reason. Maybe we're meant for each other. Jacqueline Hyde also include black and green usually. Yeah, and that's his design, and I think Fritz. Fritz's character design was like, uh, what would, hold on. Hopefully I don't find any spoilers for him. Okay, no, he, do, he doesn't have like a, a green color palette. He has like a, a gray and yellow color palette. I just found one of his sprites. But yeah, looking at his like one sprite that I looked at on Google, his hair and all that is very similar to Varg's. It's just he has white hair and Varg has black hair, which is also another like mirror thing, like black and white. To be fair, Karma turned into a little werewolf, so a simple hair color change wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're meant for each other. I narrow my eyes as he approaches. Behind his back, I can make out the open door. And don't even think about it. You don't want me to pounce you in the hallways, do you? Um, what if I do, though? What if I want you to pounce me in the hallways? <laughs> and that would be unpleasant. Oh, you spoiled yourself, but his curse is even smarter than the idea. Ooh. I'm very interested in playing his route. <laughs> Varg grabs my wrist. I attempt to struggle free, but he holds tight to me. I will be your escort to dinner tonight. Oh, thank you for the hydrate ID! Thank you! Ah. 
I got a dinner date, everyone. I keep my head held high as Varg escorts me from the room. On the way to the dining hall, I glimpse the rest of the palace. It's mostly empty, save for a few soldiers. The soldiers that do stand there have a glazed look in their eyes and look right through me. Don't thank me, but you're making me be hydrated so I'm no longer thirsty. Instead of Jacqueline Hyde, what if he has a sort of black swan, white swan curse, like from the Swan Lake Ballet? Ooh, maybe. Oh, to be escorted to dinner by Vark. I'm not too familiar with Swan Lake, honestly. Don't remember much about that story. I'm very familiar with Jacqueline Hyde. Puppets. Yep, I, I outplayed you, ID. A spell cast by Mithros? Vog does not answer me as he pulls me through the hallway. Soon, I find myself in the dining hall. The guards usually standing by the walls are gone. Now there's only the royal family, and they seem to be unharmed. You? <laughs> I can see recognition in the king's eyes. My heart flutters as he stands or tries to. He manages to rise, but only just barely. I notice that his feet stay firmly planted where they are all. Oh, must be like chained down or something. Or a curse or something. Magic. Everyone's bodies look exceptionally stiff. Is this some kind of spell? Yep. You're the girl that was outside my palace months ago. Yeah, you're my dad. Mithros, what is the meaning of this? I notice that the king is not at the head of the table as usual. Everyone sits on the table sides, except for Mithros, who is at the far end. The king's seat, however, is clear. I simply brought back the crown princess. You should be thanking me, Gennaro. I have reunited you with your daughter. You're my dad! You're my dad! Woogie woogie woogie! <laughs> you are my dad! <laughs> My daughter. The king raises an eyebrow, clearly skeptical. I can see in his eyes that he's loath to trust anything Mithros has to say. So yeah, for those of you that don't know, her Cinderella curse resulted in her family to forget about her. One, the white swan and a few women are turned into swans, only able to come out at night of the full moon, and can only be broken if the princess finds true love. But if she dies, they are stuck as swans. Oh, it's kind of like uh, Princess Tutu. I guess that makes sense. Princess Tutu is a ballet and Swan Lake is a ballet. <laughs> the king slumps on his chair as Varg leads me to a seat just beside Rod. I notice Emmeline sitting just to Rod's side. She forces a smile onto her face, but I can see tears gathering in her eyes. Aww. Okay, I'm not surprised Princess Tutu's inspired by Swan Lake. I've never seen Swan Lake. <laughs> Allow me to offer a more formal introduction for our guest, even though you all know her. Her name is Lucette Riella Britton, and she is the Crown Princess of Angiel. And your blood daughter, Gennaro. The king looks at me again. This time, there's more uncertainty in his gaze. What's the name for a group of swans? See a swans? I don't know. Prince Rod will tell you, won't he? So I can cut a bit more of a spell. Odile, the daughter of the evil wizard, has the ability to change shape and form, but only to be what she wants, which is the love of the prince. So she takes the form of Odette. Oh, okay. I see, I see. Interesting. Rod? Rod looks at me, his gaze quiet but expectant. Is that Claude? <laughs> I've said that before too. <laughs> he does look kind of like an old Claude, doesn't he? 
Uh, I don't want to say I am indeed the crown princess. That sounds like a weird response. Uh, it is nice to meet you. There's no point in trying to convince the king of my birthright here and now. I would only confuse him more, and now is not the time or place. I glance at Mithros, who is smiling at me expectantly. Besides, Mithros must have a reason for insisting on my birthright right now. <laughs> Basically, she's forced to be what others want due to this, or a twisted version. Oh, huh. Interesting. That, that, I could see why you would mention that being like a curse on, on Varg, then. Most likely, he just means to confuse the king more. If that's the case, I will not play into such a petty scheme. Rod awkwardly drinking tea during this moment. <laughs> My name is Lucette. They added Claude's brother to Three Hopes. He's a fucking scrunkly. Please show me what he looks like. I need to see this. Thank you for your kindness that one time. Uh, yeah, Rod, Rod is cursed. So the thing with curses is if you're cursed, the curse, like, um, some details of the curse don't affect you. Like, if memory alteration occurs. So, like, Rod knows that she's a princess because he's cursed. And, like, pretty much everyone else that's cursed knows that she is the princess. But everyone else does not know that she is a princess. Also, damn. Damn, Cla Claude's brother got me acting up. <laughs> Mithros' smile has twisted into a frown. I feel proud in seeing him caught off guard. Okay, I did the right one. <laughs> Down bad Elio 7, ton of the new synth. <laughs> We're gonna start running out of Star Wars titles at some... Or not Star Wars titles. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. Wait, no, it is Star Wars titles. What's that? Also, congrats, Elio. You're officially at Endgame, and are now finished making Root Dependent Story- No. <laughs> Jojo! <laughs> Jojo! <laughs> Jojo! <laughs> I'm a dumbass! Tales of Symphonia! Wait, I thought- Oh! Okay, I thought for a while you were like trying to do- Okay, Dawn of the New Sim- I see, okay. It's a Tales of Symphonia reference. <laughs> Okay, it's Tess's <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a dumbass. God. Oh, we, we weren't playing Tales of Sym Symphonia. Uh, we were playing Tales of... What was it? Symperia? No, I did not start a Tales of game. Uh, they're talking about Barnes' playthrough of Vesperia. I think he called it Tales of Symperia. Because I was constantly in chat talking about how attracted I am to Yuri Lowell. <laughs> Lisette, what are you doing here? I would love to play it again, though. I would love to play Tales of Symphonia on stream someday. Gennaro, she is undoubtedly your daughter. That is why she is in the room that you have been taking care of. I, I knew there would be too many clips, so I couldn't continue with that. Oh, okay. I did one JoJo reference and one Star Wars reference. Okay. I see. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go through all the clips now and see what everything was referencing then. What? The king's eyes widen. He looks at a loss for words. Princess, the king has been keeping your room clean and tidy for the sake of nostalgia. He has no idea why. Magic works in interesting ways, doesn't it? I was wondering why my room was unchanged, but could it be that the king remembers me somehow? I look up at him, but he's already glanced away from me. His expression a complicated twist of confusion and helplessness. Oh, have a good night, ID! Good night, good night, good night! 
It seems that even the king does not fully understand. I turn to Mithros. It can work in both good and bad ways. Ah, yes, the fairy tale curse is terrible, isn't it? I catch Bark's eyes from the side of the room. He glances away from me and I follow his gaze to the corners of the room. I hadn't noticed them before, but now I see cloaked figures hiding in the shadows. Witches. They must be the ones holding everyone in place if they try to escape. But not all magic is terrible, like the magic we will use to revive the queen. You're insane. Hildur is mad. You have no right to refer to her by name. Okay, Mr. Simp. One, no subtitle. Two, Revenge of the Simp slash Sith. Three, Simping Diamond is Unbreakable. Four, Denial is Not Just a River. Five, Cult Ass Trial. Six, No One is Safe. Seven, Dawn of the New Simp slash World. Oh, okay. What was Denial is Not Just a River a reference to? A sudden chill envelops the room. I can feel actual icicles on the table. I pull my hands away. No. We are going to eat dinner, and we are going to enjoy it. And every day will be just like this until the queen returns. Oh, to you being in denial about now. Okay. <laughs> Rod glares across the table at Mithros. Why? Why would we not enjoy dinners together? That's not what I meant. Why go through this charade day after day? I stare across the table at Mithra's glaring. Because he wants all. I think it's because he wants to corrupt me. I already told you before. I had to clear this place of traitors. Alcaster planned on stealing the crown and I stole it back. But because the time of the Queen's revival is so close, I decided to keep the crown with me until I can return it to its appropriate or owner. Hildur is... Queen Hildur is the true owner of the crown. I thought it best that we all wait out her arrival together. Three out of seven are from Cinderella Phenomenon. I guess Cinderella Phenomenon brings out the sympathy. <laughs> But know this, when my queen demands it, I will kill all of you. I simply refuse to act without her orders. This time, guards come into the room with food. They set it before us, and we're forced to eat beneath Mithros's watchful gaze. Can't be here for long, but Film Theory made a video of how to kill minions, Elio. I will have to watch that later then, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Though I try to spot an opening in the dining hall, I can find a way out. You sent for Kratos, now you and Vark. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. This really is a prison. I have a feeling Mithros has a curse himself. Something like a juniper tree, curse, or seven ravens. No, he, he's not cursed, because he's a witch. He, he inflicts curses on people. Two days pass. I've been searching for ways out and trying to ease more answers out of Varg and Mithros. I sure hope the guards are actually good at cooking LMAO. Oh god! <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> Neither of them is very forthcoming. But Lucid is basically a witch. True. So there, there are some caveats to the witch thing. So if you're not that strong of a witch, you can get cursed by another witch. And Lucette hasn't awoken to her witch powers. So that explains why Lucette and Waltz can get cursed. Because they're not powerful witches. But Mythos, like, I mean, we're seeing it in action. He's a pretty powerful witch. So I'm not sure if he, it's possible to curse him. Like, I don't think Delora could get cursed. Either. What if a stronger witch, Lucette's mom, cursed Mythos? That could be possible. That, because if anyone would be stronger than Mithras, it would be Lucette's mom, since she is the queen of the witches. 
Both enjoy speaking in riddles. Varg especially is an enigma. Whenever I try to ask him about Fritz, he smirks at me and remains silent. See? <laughs> Elio, Deathmark 2 trailer. Elio. Ah! Oh, I heard before you! You got another game! Yen! A sequel to Deathmark! Nice! I don't think Delora could get cursed. I mean, us talking about Delora tends to be cursed. Yeah, but she's not cursed. She's too strong for that. She's a bad bitch. You can't curse her. What? Not going to try asking me any questions tonight? I'm not gonna get any answers from Varg. And it's almost my birthday. I need to find a way out of here. Gotta go pick up my Among Us cake from Store. I was gonna like give a specific store name, but I forgot the name of the store. <laughs> I'm disappointed. You're the only fun I have in here, princess. Maybe if I'm quiet, he'll leave me alone. Deathmark 2 has been out for a while. Or did they release an actual sequel sequel? I DM'd you the trailer to look at it later, but they have another doll character and I'm... Ooh, okay. Let me see. Yeah, Spirit Hunter Deathmark 2 is the name of this game. Oh, for Cal. <laughs> like, legit Deathmark 2. Okay. Can a witch curse themselves? I'm not sure. We haven't really, like... Like, all we know is what the game is handing us with information about curses. So I'm not sure. I, I have no idea. If you're just going to be quiet and sulk, I guess I should be going. Remember, don't try anything funny. And there are knights just outside your door. Petition for Yashiki to stop getting pestered by supernatural dolls. So that's the that's the plot of Deathmark, I'm guessing. <laughs> Still got to play that game. Varg bows mockingly. He leans down to pat me on the head before he turns and leaves. I cannot give up. Yeah, why would a witch curse themselves, though? But, like, a curse is a curse. I mean, I guess... Karma's curse is kinda alright, because it makes them turn into a wolf. That has, like, super strength. So I guess maybe a witch wanna, would want to do that, but why not just... Why not just do a positive spell on themselves, then? It's under the assumption that they can control the curse, which has not been foreshadowed at all. <laughs> I cannot give up. You know, that's one thing that I was thinking about, like, Waltz, was possibly because Waltz is a witch, possibly cursing himself. But, like, the curse growing beyond what he expected. But I think Waltz said that he was cursed by another witch. I cannot give up. I once again begin my search through the room. Time is running out, and there's nothing I can do besides search her way out. Oh, only fairy ca fairies can do positive magic. That's right. That's right. So they can't bless people. They can only curse. But I know that if I leave the room, the knights will catch me immediately. If I had a weapon, I might stand a chance. I put my fingers to my neck and remember what Chevalier told me about it. I think that's what he's trying to do to Lisette, what you're mentioning. Oh, uh, Cal. With sacrificing to now allow another to live. I'm thinking he's gonna use Lucette as like a, a way to bring her mom back. Possibly in Lucette's body, I don't know. Sleep. The sound comes from outside my door. It's a woman's voice. The door opens, and suddenly, Chevalier and Delora are both in my room. I knew Delora was coming. I knew that was Delora. Princess. I'm startled to see Chevalier standing before me, his eyebrows drawn over his eyes with great worry. And beside him stands Delora with her arms crossed. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I can only curse. I can't believe Delora drops F-bombs every single sentence. 
<laughs> All right, but I think I'm gonna stop here for uh, Cinderella Phenomenon for the night. And we'll pick up with this next time. And hopefully the next stream will be the finale for Chevalier's route. And maybe we might start at Fritz's route. I'm not sure. Let Delora say fuck. Hell yeah. All right, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna uh, take a quick BRB to get something to eat. And then we will be playing Devil Survivor. So I hope that you guys are looking forward to it. Yeah, Devil Survivor! But yeah, thank you for being here for Cinderella Phenomenon. <laughs>